our meticulously crafted Blender template, tailored for novices and professionals alike, is your gateway to producing dynamic, high-quality clothing renders. A harmonious blend of ease and sophistication, this tool is designed to save you time and amplify your brand's visual style. Step into the future of apparel presentation and equip your brand with the edge it needs to stand out. The main file of this template uses Blender, so if you don't already have it, head over to blender.org to download and install it. To add your design to the image file which applies to the garment, you can use Adobe Photoshop or a free online alternative called Photopea. Finally, if you want to render out animations and not just still images, you'll need compositing software. In this video, I'll show you how to composite your animation using DaVinci Resolve, a free software, as well as Adobe After Effects. Once you've downloaded the template, we're ready to get started. First, extract the zip file. Let's add our own designs to the file named design.psd. You can open it using either Photoshop or Photopea. Enable the guide layer, which clearly shows each part of the garment and hide the placeholder grid or delete it if you want. I'm going to add my logo to the tags. I'll first drag and drop my logo on the canvas. Now I'm holding shift and option or alt on my keyboard while dragging the corners to resize it proportionally from the center. I'll place it in the center of the green safe areas of the tag guides and confirm the transform by clicking confirm. With the logo still selected, I can hit command J on Mac or control J on Windows to duplicate it so I can resize and place accordingly on the other tags. I'll follow the same process for adding designs to the front, back and sleeves. Once you're ready, hide the guide layer, hit save and open the blender file. To see how your design looks on the garment, select material preview from the viewport shading options. Material preview doesn't have accurate lighting, but it's good for previewing animation in real time. Whereas the render preview will give you an accurate representation of how the final image will look, animations will be quite slow in this view. So we'll only use render preview when we configure the lighting in the next steps. To navigate around your garment to check that the design is well placed, use this gizmo to rotate, the magnify icon to zoom and the hand icon to pan around. If the backdrop gets in the way, just hide it for now by unchecking this checkbox next to scene. I think the design is a bit too high on the back, so I'll quickly adjust it back in the design.psd file. Remember to hide the guide layer again before saving. I'll reload the file to see the updated changes by switching to the shading tab, making sure material preview is on and selecting the garment in the viewport. Reload the design.psd file by clicking this folder icon and selecting it again. You can easily change the color of the fabric and tags using these two color blocks. I don't recommend using 100% white or black, as these digital values don't exist in the real world and won't show the way light interacts with the garment accurately. You can also hide any of the tags by dragging these sliders to zero. Don't worry about the dark spots left behind. If we switch to the render preview, you can see this won't show up in the final image. You can switch back to the default front camera view by clicking this camera icon. Let's go ahead and customize the template further for a final render. I'll switch back to the layout view so I can see the timeline. Here in the scene collection under clothing, we have all of the animated variations of the garment. By default, the template opens with the standard static t-shirt. To show other variations, just make sure the one you want is the only one checked. I'll quickly cycle through all of these to see what I want for the final render and explain how to adjust the animations. Most of these are quite self-explanatory in their titles. Variations with Rotation 1 have a 360 degree rotation animation at a constant speed. Rotation 2 and 3 also rotate 360 degrees, but with different speed variations. Wind simulations feature subtle wind animation built into the fabric, and the walk cycle has a realistic walking animation built into it. For this example, I'll choose the wind simulation rotation 2 and speed up the animation. The timeline in this project is 355 frames long or around 11.8 seconds as we can see on the timeline. To change the speed at which this rotation happens, open up the collection and select the object. 
the keyframes now appear in the timeline which contain the rotation animation. Then click and drag the keyframe at the end to the left. I'm going to drag it to frame 109, making the animation 4 seconds long, because the project is 30 frames per second and starts at frame 0. Next I'll configure the lighting. As with the clothing variations, just check the option you want to use. At this point I'll put the backdrop back on to catch the shadows, but you don't have to if in the end you want a transparent or plain background. I'll also switch to the render preview for viewport shading. This way we can get a better idea of how the lighting will look. If you want to change the color of the backdrop, select the studio backdrop object, go to its material properties and change the base color. To have a plain solid background color instead, disable the scene, head over to the render properties and uncheck the transparent setting under the film section, then in world properties change the color of the surface. To change the color of any light, open the collection and click on the light object. The object data properties for the light should automatically show up. Here you can change the color or brightness of the light. Toggle these eye icons so you can see what effect each light has. The only light which has a different process for changing the color is the neon light. For this, switch to the shading tab and select any of the cylinder objects. Go to the material properties to bring up its related node tree. If you can't see anything, go to view frame all. Adjust the emission color and the emission strength to adjust the brightness. There are over 70 camera presets, not including the variations that have depth of field built in, so I won't go through every single one. All you have to do to switch to a camera is click on the green camera icon next to a preset. If nothing happens in the viewport, make sure that the camera view is active. This depth of field camera has animation data for its movement as well as the focus distance. And I want those to match the timing of the clothing rotation animation that we adjusted earlier. So I'll drag a box around all these keyframes and drag them to frame 109. To get a better idea of the camera animation, switch back to material preview. We're finally ready to render this out as a still image or as an animation. First head over to the output properties tab and set the resolution. For this example I want the output to be a vertical video so I'll swap the values for x and y. Just keep in mind that not every camera movement will work in this vertical format especially with the background enabled so if you see that something isn't working either disable the background or choose a new camera angle. Next, we'll change the end frame to 109 because earlier we shortened all the animation presets to that frame and I only want to render out that duration of 4 seconds. Choose where you want to save the frames. I recommend creating a unique folder for this because when we render it'll export 109 individual images which we'll then stitch together afterwards in our compositing software. If you have a transparent background, choose the PNG file format with RGBA color. Otherwise, if you're using the backdrop or a solid color, leave it on RGB. Next, go to the preferences found in the edit menu. And on the system tab, check that in the cycles render devices, you have only the GPU device of your system checked. For other users, this could be under a tab labeled OpenGL instead of Metal like mine. If you don't have a dedicated GPU, just ignore the step and continue with your CPU. Go to the render properties tab and double check that you have GPU compute set for the device if you do have a dedicated graphics card. In the render settings keep the max samples at 4096. In the latest versions of Blender adaptive sampling is enabled by default so Blender will automatically determine which parts of the image need the most time to render so all you need to adjust is the noise threshold value. I've set it to 0.02 for this project, that value gives me a good quality image with minimal noise in a reasonable render time in most cases. But if you really need something done fast, you could increase this to 0.2 at most. If you have a decent graphics card or more patience, the lowest you should go is 0.002. The lower the value, the less noise, but the slower the render time. In summary, 0.2 for a fast render, 0.02 for a decent render, and 0.002 for the best render. Feel free to adjust between those values if you want to optimize your render further. Lastly, make sure denoise is unchecked. 
I wouldn't recommend using the denoise because you could lose a lot of detail in the fabric texturing and possibly fine details in your design. This kind of denoising is also not great for animation and can leave strange artifacts behind because it doesn't take into account the adjacent frames of animation. If you really must render at a high noise threshold like 0.2, you should use a third party temporal denoiser like this free Blender add-on. If you don't have a powerful machine or limited time, I think this is a great solution and worth paying for even though it's available for free. Finally, I'll make a still image render as a test before rendering the full animation. Select render, render image. If you'd like, you can also save this. I'm happy with this and don't need to adjust the noise threshold, so I'll go to render, render animation. Once all my frames are rendered, I'll open up DaVinci Resolve and start a new project. Because our animation is 30 frames per second, go to File, Project Settings, and change the timeline frame rate to 30, then save. Next, change the layout at the bottom to Media, and navigate to where your animation frames are saved. To create a shortcut to a folder where you can easily access your renders, right-click and add a new location. Once you're in the folder with your frames, click these three dots and change the frame display mode to Sequence, and drag this file into the Media Pool. Switch over to the edit view and drag this clip into the timeline. Then switch to deliver view to adjust the final export settings. Choose a location for your final video and stick with the default settings for a standard MP4. If you want to export with a transparent background in the case where you might be compiling this into an existing video project with your own custom backgrounds, then choose Apple ProRes Quadruple 4 or GoPro Cineform RGB 16-bit. Add to render queue and render all. Your final video is now ready. To composite in Adobe After Effects, double click in the project pane to bring up the import window, select the first image in your animation sequence and check the create composition and PNG sequence options, then hit open. Go to file, export, add to render queue and adjust the final export settings. For a standard MP4 file, stick with this H.264 preset in the output module and choose a location for your final video. If you have a transparent background, choose the lossless with alpha preset in the output module. Click render and your final video is now ready. You can leave a comment on the video if you have any questions not covered and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. I'm also available through the contact form on my website if you need any additional assistance.